Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mary Human, and I'm pleased to welcome you to the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of All Saints. The ladies of the Ukrainian Women's Association of Canada, Hanka Romanchich branch, are pleased to share a valued tradition of making Pascha bread today. Our commentator is Cecilia Kuchkowski, and I will pass this on to her. Before we start making our Pascha, I'd like to share some historical information with you. We are victims of our history and our geography. Geography plays a great role in who we are and what we do and what we think. Ukraine is situated in Central Eastern Europe. It was blessed with vast areas of black steppe soil. On this soil grew the best wheat in Europe and Ukraine became known as the breadbasket of Europe. This area of the world produced the top grain, top grade of wheat. And when we have a top grade of wheat, you can get a high grade of flour, which in turn makes high grade food, especially bread and flour products. Geography defines who we are. It shapes our culture. It influences our food our clothing, our arts, our language, our religion, our songs, our music, our folklore. And Ukrainians have been engaged in farming for many, many generations. We are known as the sons of the soil. We love our fields, we love the soil. We love our gardens, our herbs, our flowers, and our orchards. Ukraine had very, uh, not only a good soil base, it also had an excellent climate, a temperate climate, but with a longer growing season that we have in Canada. So we have developed many breads using this top grade of flour. And we have four major holidays in the year where we use different types of festive breads, Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, which we refer to as Obzhimke, or the harvest, and of course, uh, weddings. And bread it plays a very important part in all of these holidays. Bread is the symbol of many things. It's a symbol of joy, of good luck, of good health, and wealth. And bread and salt represents hospitality and friendship. When our pioneers came to Canada, they brought with them many seeds. It was an easy thing to bring. Vegetable seeds, herb seeds, flower seeds. They also brought some grain seeds. And among these was the uh, variety of halachanka, a variety of wheat that was popularly grown in Ukraine. And when they brought this variety of halachanka wheat to Canada, it was hybridized with different varieties of wheat. And so what we can say is all wheat presently grown in Canada can trace its roots to the basic Halachanka variety from Ukraine. A fact that we are, of course, very proud of. A French writer, Honor de Balzac, went to Ukraine in the mid 1800s. He married a beautiful Ukrainian girl and he lived in a village not far from the capital city of Kiev. He wrote home to France to his friends and family, how he was enamored with the uh, climate, with the culture, with the language, with the uh, activities in Ukraine. And he especially was impressed with the wheat and the flour and the breads. And he wrote in his writings to his family that he had tasted 77 different kinds of bread. Today, we will only taste two. So bread is the holiest of foods. It is always treated with respect to the very last crumb. 
and the Pascha is the most important bread. It is the central bread that we use for Easter. And Easter is, in Ukrainian, a translation is Velegde, which means great day. Our church celebrates 12 major feast days, but Easter is not one of them. Easter is above them. And with that, we will start making our Pascha. And I'm going to call on Sonia to begin by making the base for the Pascha loaf. The Pascha bread is made from enriched white bread dough. It, it, the same process is used to make the dough as you make ordinary white bread. However, the Pascha dough is enriched with extra eggs, extra butter, and extra sugar. It's a little bit sweeter. Pascha is always round. It is uh, symbolizing eternity and love. There's no beginning and no end. There's no rule about what size the Pascha has to be. It can be as, as large as you like or as small, whatever the family has for pans. So you use a round baking pan. I'm going to ask Sonia to make a round disc to place at the bottom of the pan. This is the main part of the loaf of the bread. You make a disc of dough about a third. It'll cover about a third of the pan. A greased pan, of course. Fit it in nice and round and flat. Then you let it rise double in bulk just like ordinary bread. If we tried to decorate the Pascha at this early stage, the decorations would grow too quickly and would be misshapen. So this is why we make a simple round disc and let it rise by itself for some time. Another Sonia of our group is going to demonstrate making the decorative outside rim of the Pascha. We take two balls of dough and roll them into a thin rope. Then you plate the, twist the two ropes together, left to right, left to right, all the way down to make a single rope. And this will fit around the outside edge of the pan. She is measuring it and loosely giving it a little extra space. You want to give it uh, space to rise. Taps the excess off, dampens the ends. When you put a little bit of water on the end, this helps it seal the uh, dough together so that it doesn't uh, split apart in the baking. She is now crowning the outside of the pasca with the twisted roll. Again, the, the base may be a little bit dry, so you put a little bit of water on the edge under the ropes. And you're careful not to press the base because it has risen nicely and it's almost ready for the oven. After the base has risen and the outside rim decoration has been placed on the loaf, we can now decorate the center, and a Pascha must always have a cross in the middle. It may be a stylized cross in many different designs. And Kathy is going to demonstrate how to make a, a, a twisted uh, cross for the middle. The process is very similar to making the outside rib. You have the two ropes and you twist them together This is 
one of the most popular ways of decorating the Pascha. We always need a straight edge at the end, so the end has to be cut. And again, she moistens the top of the loaf so that the cross will stick better. If we don't do that, it might slide off to the side more in the baking process. She has measured the rope and is making one section of the cross. She is going to repeat the process and cross the rope in the middle. see that she handles the dough very gently and the cross is now complete. Lorraine is going to show us another way of making a decorative cross for the middle of the Pascha. The decorations on a Pascha are many and varied, but it must always have a cross in the middle and the cross is, and the decoration or the decorative cross is only limited by your imagination and artistic uh, abilities. And a little practice and experience helps a lot. Lorraine took two ropes and plated them together. And now cut the double rope in half and she's pulling apart the ends. She's swirling the two end ropes towards the center to make a curved end on the cross. She does this on the table. When it's ready, again, dampens the part of the Pasca that she's going to place the rope on. She has the first rope on the cross, or on the Pascha, and now she's going to repeat the process with the other rope. Again, we're dampening the pasca very gently without pushing the dough down and placing the second piece of rope on top of the first one. This pasca is now complete. Another Sonia in our group is going to demonstrate how to make another different style of cross decoration for the Pascha. She has taken a piece of dough and rolled it into a rope and then has flattened it into a flat uh, piece of dough and she is going to be cutting the ends from each side and then she is rolling the ends into a uh, rope with a flat center. Your imagination and ingenuity are the only limitations to making decorations for the Pascha, as long as it is respectful and as long as we have the all-important cross in the middle. And as you can see, 
We can make many styles of crosses. Sonia is rolling the ends into a spiral at each end. So it'll be four spirals to each piece of dough. She's now placing it on the pasca. Repeats the process with the second piece. If the dough doesn't want to roll or stick to your hands, you simply dip your fingers into a drop of, uh, of water and this will help you roll. You never add additional fat or flour when you're making these ropes. It will change the texture of the dough and you don't want that. The spirals are made at one end, the spirals towards the center on the other end, and it's ready to go across. Just tuck them into position. As evenly as possible. Sonia is going to add an additional decoration. She's going to make a rosette for the center. Pasta's beside the cross can have all kinds of decorations. Rosettes, birds, pine cones, swirls, spirals, leaves, as, uh, along with the plated, braided, uh, twisted ropes for the edges. We have just used two ropes for the edges. If you'd like to make finer ropes and braid it as a hair braid, you can do that too. She has cut the edges and then rolls them up. And as she rolls the rosette, the flattened piece of dough, you have a little spiky floret. You moisten the edge of the pasca, the cross, and she places the rosette in the middle. And it is now complete. To dig the rosette into the pasca, into the middle, it is wise to cut the dough with scissors. So you don't press the dough down, but you cut an X in the middle. The pasca can be as ornate as you wish it to be. She is now making some swirls. You can see when her hands got dry, she dipped it into a bowl of water, just a couple of drops, and this helps uh, roll the dough. And another spiral comes together in the middle and one is separated, more of an S shape. Another Easter bread is the babka. It is a tall uh, bread baked in a cylinder form. The, this dough is even richer than the pasca. And we often like to add a little yellow coloring to it. Our grandmothers used to add saffron. We add a touch of uh, 
turmeric, very little, or we add also something like pumpkin, cooked pumpkin, and orange. We use the whole orange, the juice, and the uh, rind, and this produces a nice yellow color. The babka is much sweeter. We add more sugar and more uh, milk, more butter, and this produces a very light uh, dessert bread. The babka can be decorated with icing on top if we like, if when it's cool. Or else we just leave it plain and we cut it in circles and enjoy it as our dessert. Our women's group, the Ukrainian Women's Association of Canada, Han Karamajic branch, have published a cookbook. This is a feature cookbook, uh, a collection of family recipes that we thought were important to pass on to our children and our grandchildren. However, along with the recipes, we felt it was important to include ethnographical material. So the first 53 pages of our book, From Baba with Love, features the spring and summer season, the autumn season, and the winter season and then it goes into the sacraments of our church. Then the second, this is the first 53 pages. The second section is our uh, recipe section. And we have soups and salads, breads and rolls, cereals and grains, main dishes, vegetables and side dishes, cakes and cookies, desserts and squares, and preserves. The unique quality of this book is we engaged a professional food photographer to take the pictures and uh, food uh, arrangers to arrange the food for the photography. So the photography is original and that alone is a very uh, important aspect. We wanted our children to see exactly how some of these foods would look. When we printed our cookbook, we also took the, some of the pictures, eight to be exact, and featured them in wordless, hasty notes. These are cards that can be used for many different occasions. We have two wedding breads, we have celebratory Christmas collage, and Easter baking, and it also features the Pascha. So we have these two publications that are available. The uh, cookbook is available for sale at McNally Robinson or the Ukrainian Museum of Canada or from any member of our Women's Association.